Sure. My name is uh, Bruce Bratch. I'm the Director of Marketing for Object. We're a uh, partner of SolidWorks and participating in their media event today. very happy to be here. Great. Now, Bruce, what are some of the misconceptions you've seen about 3D printing? So, a lot of folks, uh, there's a huge variety of 3D printers in the world, uh, from the entry level consumer uh, maker bot type machines all the way to the professional ones. And the thing that people don't realize is they tend to they tend to group them all together. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a vast difference between a very high-end machine and a consumer level machine. The material options that you get on a high-end machine versus the, the low-end machine, the quality that you get. Because of the popularity of the, the, the entry-level machines, they're very use the term crude in terms of their surface finishing and whatnot. When you get to the high-end machines, there's a lot better surface finishing, a lot more functionality, things like movable parts, the ability to print rubber and plastic at the same time. Those types of features are not available on the low end, so people tend to group their thoughts about 3D printers for the low end. Not that it's a bad thing, but there's much more capability when you get to the high-end. High end. As you mentioned, uh, consumer applications, when do you feel like 3D printing will become more mainstream and that will be sort of a um, thing that you can do at home? Sure. That's a, that's a question everybody's asking. You know, when's your mom going to own her own 3D printer? This is, this is my sole opinion. I wouldn't say this is necessarily everybody in object, but uh, my opinion is that the uh, hobbyist, the engineer who's an inventor at night, those guys will gravitate and, and buy those machines and love them and get great use out of them. The, the consumer, John Q. Public, won't do that. What they'll end up doing is, if they need to replace a knob on their radio, they'll download, eventually download the file from Chrysler, BMW, whatever it is, and go to Staples or Home Depot or one of those places in order to get their 3D printer. They use the analogy, the technology exists today for a paperless office, but it's really just not practical. The same is true for the 3D printer. The technology exists for everyone to own one, but it won't be practical. The cost of the material, the infrequency of use, they'll probably utilize a 3D printer, but it won't be in their home. It'll be at their disposal at a local Kinko or something like that. Okay. And it seems like you have some really cool items here. Um, what do you feel is the coolest item you've been able to print at Object? Um, there's, you know, it's, it's interesting because our printers are, are owned and purchased by so many varying companies. I think the one that, that people like to hear a lot about is we, we do a lot of uh, help in the entertainment industry and uh, there's a company we, that we work with that owns one of our printers called Legacy Effects. They're a production studio for Marvel Studios. And so they produce a lot of the, the costumes and whatnot um, for the movies. And one of the ones that's most known is uh, Robert Downey Jr. And the costume that he wore in Iron Man was actually printed on our machine, uh, a majority of it, and actually used by Robert Downey Jr. in the movie.